Hi everyone, my name's Miss Gavin, and today I'm going to be reading with you one of my favorite books for this time of year. No, it's not a Halloween book or a Thanksgiving book. It's about 9-11, and we just recently celebrated 9-11 on Friday. So it's going to be called The Man in the Red Bandana. Now, based on the cover of this picture, what do you think this book's going to be about? Hmm. They look a little bit concerned in the back, so there might be some trouble going on there. And what about the guy in the middle? What do you think is going on? What do you think he's doing there? He's pointing off in the distance and he has something in his hand with a bandana around his face. Hmm, he must be the main character then because it's the man in the red bandana. Let's get into the book. When he was only seven years old, Wells was given a bandana by his father. It was a special gift that made Wells feel strong. Wells' dad always carried a blue bandana, and Wells' new bandana was just like it, only red. From the moment Wells received that bandana, he carried it with him everywhere. It had lots of uses. It was a cowboy mask. See Wells playing with it. He has his cowboy mask on there. A pirate hat. A flag to signal the end of the race. So he's using it to play with his friends. As Wells grew up, he stopped using his red bandana as a toy and started to use it underneath his helmets. You see, Wells was an athlete whose favorite sports were ice hockey and lacrosse. What are your guys' favorite sports? Hmm. Mine is gymnastics and cheerleading. I also love running. He wore that bandana underneath his helmet to keep the sweat out of his eyes. Wells not only wore a helmet when he played sports, he also wore one as a volunteer firefighter. Starting to grow up and use the bandana for different things in these pictures. At the age of 16, Wells again followed his father's example and became a volunteer fireman. He trained with real firefighters and was taught that rescuing people who were trapped inside was their first priority. Priority sounds like one of our vocabulary words. Priority means the fact or condition of being regarded or treated as more important. Priority. Hmm. Save that one. He also learned how to get safely through the burning building and put out the fires. It was his, this training and the red bandana that helped Wells become a hero. See here, he's a firefighter, just like how his dad was back in the day. After college, Wells went to work on the 104th floor of the World Trade Center in New York City. Wells loved working up so high. He often called his father to ask on rainy days, what's the weather like down there? When his father replied it was well, raining, Wells would say, well, it's sunny up here. But on Tuesday morning, September 11th, 2001, it was a, not a rainy day. The sun was bright and there were no clouds in the blue sky. See him calling his dad looking from the clouds. Big, look how big those towers were compared to all those other buildings. And these buildings are all tall too. As Wells sat in his office, he heard an explosion nearby that rattled his desk and his chair. When he looked out the window to see the World Trade Center Tower 1 building, he could see fire spewing out all across the floors in front of him. Wells wanted to help with a tragic situation unfolding in the next tower. Just minutes after the explosion in Tower 1, Wells left his office. So, what do you think in Wells' past made him want to go and help these people? Was it because maybe he was a firefighter or because his 
dad always helped people by being a firefighter as well. Hmm. To get down to the lobby from above the 78th floor, you had to first take an elevator to the 78th floor sky lobby. From there, you took a non-stop elevator to the ground floor. Many people would be waiting in the sky lobby for their elevator. Wells knew it would take too long to wait for an elevator from the 104th floor to the sky lobby and then one to the ground, so he headed down the stairs. In a few minutes, Wells had made it all the way down near the 78th floor. That's when another explosion occurred. Only this one was so much louder and stronger than the last. See all those people waiting for the elevator there? So he didn't want to get on it, obviously. And then there's him going down the stairs, and it looks like it's right as the explosion hit. It looks kind of like he's shaking a little bit. Wells ran right for the door of the sky lobby but could tell by a smoke coming into the stairwell that there were fires burning inside. Wells took out his red bandana and tied it around his nose and mouth so that he did not breathe in the smoke. He finally made it, but you can see the smoke coming out. So he's using that bandana that his dad gave him. When Wells entered the sky lobby, it was hard to see through all the smoke. There were badly injured people who needed his help to get to safety. He found a fire extinguisher, extinguish one, another one of our vocab words. So I decided to use extinguish instead of extinguisher because extinguisher is the thing. So extinguish is a cause, a fire or light to cease to burn or to shine. So he found a fire extinguisher. So that probably means that he is causing the fire to cease. To put out the flames he, that continued to endanger the survivors. You can see Wells trying to help the people who are in that smoky room fighting against the fire with his fire extinguisher. See him talking to everyone. Wells immediately took charge and called out to anyone who might be able to hear him. I found the stairs. If you can get up and walk, get up now. If you are able to help someone else, help them. Follow me. I know the way. Many people were dazed, but one woman was in such a state of shock that she could not walk. Wells wanted to help as many survivors as possible. I think survivors is another one of our vocab words. And it is a person who survives, especially a person remaining alive after an event in which others have died. So he's trying to get out these people who he wants to survive while others may have died during this event. He's trying to get as much as he can he picked up the shocked woman and leading a group of three others, carried her down the stairs. Here's our cover photo again. So we can see that he's instructing the people where to go and he's telling them to go now. So he's helping them. Here's him he's carrying that lady who was in shock on his shoulder to get out of there while he's leading the other three people out of the building. Well saw the air start to clear as they made it down the stairwell, so he pulled his bandana from his face. When they made it to the 61st floor, the lights were on and Wells thought it was safe to send the people on their own. Wells told the group to continue down the stairs and out of the building. He turned around and headed back up the stairs. So even though Wells made it to safety himself along with those people, He's wanting to go back up and help more people get out of that fire. Wells collected another group of survivors and ushered them to the stairs. Again, he led them down to the clean air on the 61st floor and told them to continue on to safety. Once again, Wells went back up the stairs. 
During his third trip to the Sky Lobby, Wells found that there were people who were alive, but were trapped underneath heavy pieces of metal. He knew that in order to save them, he would need a firefighter's tool called a Jaws of Life. All the smoke is starting to get around him again. He's trying to help and save as many people as he can. Keeps going back up no matter if he is already in safety or not. Wells followed the stairs down to the lobby for his third and final trip. He found the command center where firefighters and police officers were planning the rescue effort. Wells let them know that they would need the jaws of life up in the sky lobby. But Wells would not make it back up there. The damage to both buildings was too severe and they soon collapsed. So he's running to get the jaws of life. In this picture, you can see that he found the jaws of life and was going to try to use it on those people, but never ended up making it to them. No one knew what had happened to Wells until his mother read a newspaper article months later. In the article, survivors recalled being saved by a man in a red bandana. She said to herself, there you are, Wells. I have finally found you. Wells was recognized through pictures by two women whom he led to safety. They will never forget the bravery, bravery and strength that Wells showed on that day. They will never forget the man who saved their lives. They will never forget. There's the newspaper article that his mom saw and knew instantly that he was where he needed to be and was all right. Here's him. Some other they will never forget the man in the red bandana all right that was a great book so in what ways do you think that you are similar to wells do you have a bandana or something that your family gave you one time when you were younger or something other that was important. You can think about that. And what was Wells's most important character trait? Let's think. Was it maybe his bravery? That could be one. Or how heroic he was by saving those other people? There's a lot of character traits that are his most important. He was a great character all around. Bye. I hope to see you again next time I read. Maybe it will be a Halloween book.